outro cast. Charles, Andrew, good morning, or, or is it good afternoon by you? It's 4 p.m. here. Okay. I'm, I'm just getting the day started with this stupid American energy drink. but Lovely. That's the American way. The, the American way, which you're going to experience in the very, very near future. But how's your day going aside from talking to, you know, fake news media that's going to ask you the same questions over and over and over? <laughs> Good. I, I went uh, to a town close to where we're from and I went to a museum. The weather's been very bad, so I've just been playing the banjo all day. Yes, miserable weather. Those are the exact answers that I want to hear, being a big fan of the Irish rock and roll album. If you went, oh, we went to the beach, uh, yeah, no. pina coladas, that would be very off-brand for your band. No, or miserable. We looking out at the rain, hissing at it, and then we stayed inside playing music. In sure. Yeah, well, I respect the craft. And uh, again, big fan of the Irish rock and roll album and big U.S. tour coming up in support of this. Now, this is yet another compliment, and I'm really curious. You guys are your own band. You sound like yourselves. You combine punk rock energy with traditional folk music. Now, what point did you realize it was okay to be yourselves, that you didn't have to be chasing the charts to be this successful, globally touring rock band? Um, I don't think we could be anything else if we tried, to be honest. We've yeah. always been odd. My so, personal thought is that we're kind of lazy. It's hard to be someone else, but it's easy to be yourself, I think. You just have to be a bit a bit brazen, I suppose. So since we were kids, we were ourselves, definitely. Well, at what point, though, was it realizing it's going to be a thriving career being ourselves? And I say that because when you're on a real record, label when you have booking agents when you have the traditional music industry backing usually there's at least one person in the background going you know what you should do a collaboration with this artist or you should have a more yeah. commercial hit well, so we can get it on us. radio and then the other songs you can be yourself i suppose what's good about us is that we don't have a record label so like we just kind of do what we want i think we definitely realized that like i suppose we made the decision before uh, any of the success came in that we were going to be doing it you know, so it, before we had any money, like we were so poor and we were like, well, at least we can play music and we'll at least worst comes to worst. If we play music, we'll still get fed and we'll still get watered uh, over it. So uh, we kind of decided that it was going to work before it did work. So hmm. infrastructure. And did you have anyone going, hey, you have too many people in the band. You should you should be down to four people. Well, originally it was just three of us, uh, me, Andrew and Sean. Uh, and, uh, you know, no one really, I think people were more just going like, why, why are you singing ballads? Because it wasn't very popular when we started doing it. So that was the A lot only. Of people in Ireland when we were younger, like wanted to, they wanted to be playing music from other countries and they wanted to be singing in like American accents and stuff. And like, yeah, you know, or influence. even worse, English accents. <laughs> but um, they, uh, I don't know. We were we've just always been doing it, regardless, because it's brought us happiness, and we'll always do it because it's all we know how to do. So, um, sure. it doesn't really matter how successful we are because we're just still going to do it either way. So, so, if you take a song like "Rich Man and the Poor Man," it's a very minimalistic arrangement. Was there ever a point where it was a full band take, or did that song not, evolve in any way? No, not at all. It 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 was always me with a bow on now we did think about it about doing more but then if it's not broke don't fix it also sometimes you know? the story can be lost if you add too much music to a song the actual uh, narrative of the lyrics can be lost so sometimes mm. it's better less is more so it never really changed even oh. actually when andrew started doing harmonies on it i started getting a bit out of joint at times mm. i was like you're doing too much but uh you know it's actually it's actually only added to the song do the arrangements of the songs usually start off closer to that and then you build a band around it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Generally speaking. Every every song. We, we me, Charles and Sean bring songs to the band that we've arranged and then the band kind of just join in on them like so we figured out that way. So Got it. Okay, so that's more of the basic song that stayed a basic song. Okay, now yeah. I understand. Definitely. So when people come to see you at a big show like the Warsaw venue in Brooklyn, 
how does that set list compare to somebody seeing you in Ireland? Exact. In other words, do you have to change it around or is it the same songs everywhere? And here's why I ask that. If you take a random band like OMD, the hits were not the same in the States as they were in Europe, different set list. So what's yeah. it like for your band? I think we we stick to pretty much the same set list. Uh, it it kind of depends actually on the night that it inform us changing our end songs and depending on what's going on. If there's news that there's a particular song that it relates to on the night, it doesn't really matter uh, geographically where we are, but mo maybe more so. If we uh, want to make a point, we might change a song. But pretty much our set list is the same because uh, we tour it so much. Now, this set list when we're coming to the, uh, America will be different, I think. But, uh, but you know, we kind of keep it the same. People everywhere like us for the songs they like us for. I think as well, if we're enjoying the songs, if we have energy for the songs, other people will get energy off it as well. Like. Yeah. Hmm. Is it going to be most of the Irish rock and roll album in the set list? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there'll be a few new songs as well, though. So we be... just haven't figured out what they are yet. But yeah. The, we'll, the reason I'm having... asking that one is sometimes you find bands go, oh, if we play more than two songs on the new album, the crowd looks at us dazed. But in this <laughs> case, when you have a masterful album that got great reviews, maybe that Thank is you. the focal point. So it can go either way. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely be playing a lot of the album. Like We'll just we'll be experimenting with new songs as well the next few months for our next album. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely be doing it. Our, our gigs more. are always fun anyway. So I think even if we do kind of out there stuff or different stuff, I think the audience like it anyway. But we also know if something's not working, we'll make sure there's, we'll make sure that the next song works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can read a crowd at this awesome. point in your career. You can know yes. it's not working. Barely. Yeah. So this this is a potentially stupid question, but I'm genuinely intrigued. So this town that I live in on Long Island in New York is called uh, Long Beach, but they call it the Irish Riviera because it's such a large Irish population. You know, well, people from actually Ireland. And every time it's March, uh, you have all the people going, oh, I'm Irish, I'm Irish. And like, no, you're not. They're just for St. Patrick's Day. They're Irish. So they eat their corned beef and cabbage. All yeah. these things that real Irish people don't do. Don't do, no. Uh, they they listen to Thin Lizzy just for that day. Uh, <laughs> not the great songs of Thin Lizzy. They just listen to Boys Are Back in Town and Whiskey. That's it. Everyone becomes Irish for a week, and, and that's kind of it. So... The U.S. always has its Irish population that comes out for a little bit. But where is the number three country for your band? Because obviously Ireland, U.S. But where else are they kind of Irish obsessed in all the wrong ways? You know, sometimes in Europe, maybe. Like, it's interesting in Europe, some people, like, Germans have, like, a different view of, like, for some reason, uh, Irish folk music was huge in Germany around the 60s. And maybe and the fifties and sixties, maybe because they couldn't really be proud of their own uh, <laughs> oak traditions at that point. So I think that's why they they went for that. So I think kind of maybe in Europe, like we we played a gig in Switzerland one time, and there was a lot of people dressed up like Vikings. It was crazy, like do you know, there's actually because they thought it was like an Irish thing. There's a whole circuit all over the world of like Irish festivals, and we've done we've done that one really, but generally we try and steer away from Irish festivals because. We're more interested in playing to people who just want to listen to us at face value. And it doesn't really matter where you're from. Like, that's our main thing. Like, but it's obviously great that Irish people, they're easier to get on board. Like, but um, it's weird. But it was funny to... that, like, def I think definitely Europe, because like that, they were all dressed as Vikings doing like synchronized dancing. And we'd never seen anything like they thought that was real Irish. It was like being in a cult. It was kinda... weird. So actually Switzerland. Never mind Germany. Germany, they're always normal in Germany. But what's weird is... But Switzerland, we played, they're weird. We played that gig in... I think it was in Sion. And the next day we played in another town in Switzerland. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but we it were... It was Winter Tour. Winter Tour. And we were playing there the next day and we told the people about that and they were like, what? Yeah, you know, so... Because the, the next gig we did in Switzerland was amazing. So yeah, yeah. So it's actually not even Switzerland. It's just... There's a group of kind of spin off of people who've people who think that it's Irish to wear a kilt. Like I remember the first time I heard about the corned beef thing. 
Like I couldn't believe that because I it, I know nothing of this over here. I don't even really know what corned beef is. It's like a jolly roll. Do you know the stuff? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of the worst meat. Yeah, uh, there there Old possibly food. is. You, yeah, you, th there couldn't be Angus corned beef as far as no. I know. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> and it sounds like you have the exact opposite approach of, say, Flogging Molly, a band I do like, don't get me wrong mm -hmm. here, but Flogging Molly is basically Irish music for non-Irish people, whereas mm -hmm. you're Irish music for everybody, and you're not going, hey, we're Irish. Yeah, yeah. it, it just yeah. so happens that we're Irish. Like, so we that's love, what we talk about. We you love know? Ireland, and we love being Irish, and we love Irish music, obviously, but... I think it's important to have more people. A lot of the songs about immigration and stuff, people, Irish people have less in common with the songs today than may sometimes than like maybe people from other countries, you know. Maybe, coming to Ireland, you know. You know, maybe like people from, uh, but even coming to America, you know, like people who are who are having to walk across the border into America and stuff, you know what I mean? Like that, that's the immigration that's happening nowadays, like, you know, so the music is for everyone and the teams are there for everyone, like, so. It's uh, I suppose they're just such human songs that everyone should be able to relate to them. Like, absolutely. So, two stupid questions, uh, two more stupid questions. That is, Lovely. and I will let you go. And and the first one is obviously you were fans first before you were this successful global band. Uh, what's the last concert that both of you went to as a fan? Not because you're going to get up on stage. And guess for a song, but yeah. because you go, I, I want to see these people. Cypress Hill. We were in LA and we went to see Cypress Hill and it was one of the best was concerts amazing. I was ever at in my life. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, we went to go see Cypress Hill. It was, it was it, like a childhood dream to see Cypress Hill and they delivered. Ironically, the last interview I did was Be Real a couple oh, of days ago. Right. Yeah, sadly. Now, yeah. was he dressed as Dr. Green Thumb for part yeah. Yes, the, they were doing. Uh, uh, I think it was the Black 50th, Sunday, forty anniversary of Black, thirtieth anniversary of Black Sunday. It was brilliant. And they did the album start to finish, and yeah, amazing. and and uh, Trash Talk were supporting them, and they were really good too. <clears throat> wow. So, yeah, it was unbelievable. And we actually we, met Send Dog afterwards, and he's since come to one of our gigs with DJ in Lynch. Ireland. So, do you think that could be one of the collaborations? Because when we go down the list, yes, of yeah. course. Pogues people happen and hey, you were on the Jules Holland thing. But is there a way that a send dog could get into a Mary Wallopers collaboration? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Or the other way around. We're always willing to work with Cypress. <laughs> so now I know that there is the hip hop influence. I knew that there was the punk rock influence. But the last question, was there a metal phase for both or either of you? Yeah, well, we were really into punk. And I think actually... When I when I was much younger, I was into metal. Our older brother is 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 mad into like really old metal, like yeah, Ronnie Norman James Leo and like Iron Maiden and like. Uh, we went to see Iron Maiden yeah. with him. There was kind of a classic metal a bit, but like not as much as punk maybe, and and hip hop and. Yeah, I think we were into metal before we were into punk. I think, but like, you know, like Black Sabbath and Ronnie James Dio, all that like amazing you know like we love metal we actually we had tickets to see Ozzy Osbourne uh two years ago I think but it, he cancelled the gigs and we were distraught we were so we were gonna go with our friend Jack and we were so disappointed when we found out he cancelled it was last March we were supposed to go I think or last May so hopefully we'll see Ozzy Osbourne at some point I believe he's coming back now doing some gigs if not there's some good tribute bands out there that are singing True. And Ozzy yeah. is Mac the Sabbath, the McDonald's tribute band. <laughs> See, no Mac Sabbath as well. So basically, yeah. what I'm hearing is when the Mary Walpers are not playing, they're listening to every other kind of music than Irish folk music. Absolutely, yeah. we're big country and western fans as well. We like Mary Robbins and stuff like that too. Hank Williams. Hank we actually Williams. have a, a framed picture of Hank Williams in our kitchen. So, in other words, you are people of the world, highbrow and lowbrow. <laughs> Especially low brow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outro cast. <laughs>